discouraging word. Come on, sing. And the skies are not cloudy all day. All day it is, all day. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's all right. Oh, home on the range Where the deer and the antelope play <laughs> Where seldom is heard <laughs> A discouraging word And the skies are not clear <laughs> oh, not bad. <laughs> Thanks. Never had a lesson in my life. You know? Have you? Well, yes. Let's sing another one. That must be him now. Hello, Warner. Hello, Leeson. Hello, Lucy. Hello, Jerry. Glad you dropped up. Thanks. I really am very much interested in that mine of yours. Yes, well, I brought along all the records and history of the... Say, you know, funny thing, I've looked all over the place from McCall's report on that mine. I can't find it anywhere. You must have it. Well, maybe I have. Yeah, well, do me a favor, will you? The next chance you get, look through your stocking drawer. <laughs> she always hides important things in the top drawer of her dresser. <laughs> she does? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every legal paper we had smelled of sachet. It did? <laughs> <laughs> uh, even the marriage certificate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember when the clerk asked to see it and you couldn't find it? <laughs> <laughs> we had a bunch of pals at the hotel. Mm. They kept ribbing us all night. <laughs> Remember when they said the bellboy? Gosh, we didn't want ice water. Oh? Mm. Um, what's the matter? Oh. Well, uh, when you two are married, the three of us can talk more freely. Uh, now, about this mine business, you know, this place was formerly owned by the Fullerton brothers. They, uh... Mm. You, uh, you, uh, you heard of the Fullerton brothers, haven't you? Oh, yes. Well, it seems they didn't know much about the mining situation in Pennsylvania. Their racket was mainly... Uh... Oh, hello, Ma. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Leeson. Hello, Lucy. Ma, this is Mr. Jerry Warner. Doctor. Yes, ma'am, that's right. We got a little business proposition we've been discussing. Oh, I see. Well, it's funny seeing you. It is? Yeah. Well, it's funny seeing you. Well, uh, what I mean is, uh, I was at a tea this afternoon where some people were speaking of you. Oh. And of Lucy, too. <laughs> they knew you both uh, before uh, the divorce. <laughs> I imagine you run into dozens of people who knew us before the divorce. Oh, yes, yes. We used to get around quite a lot, didn't we? Well, they spoke very well of you. They said you were a real gentleman. Oh, oh now, did they really? You, yes. <laughs> and uh, they were talking of Lucy, too. <laughs> you know, you do sing divinely, dear. But I'd never realized till this afternoon that you'd had a teacher. And a very handsome one, I understand. You know, Lucy, there was a woman there. If I hadn't been a lady, I would have slapped her face. Well, why didn't you? I wish I had, because she insinuated. Well, as a matter of fact, she she didn't even insinuate. Well, she was talking about your divorcing Mr. Warner. <laughs> well, well, she came right out and said that it should have been. Well, <laughs> well, no matter, no matter. <laughs> No matter. Uh, no, no matter. No matter. <laughs> Let's get down to business, eh, Leeson? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'd had time to work this in mine myself, I could have made a fortune, but I was always too busy making money for other people. Yeah, there's a whole section up there simply crying for someone to go in who has the time and money to give it. Mm -hmm. I think if you could sink a shaft in this north corner right about here... Uh, wait a minute, let me show you something. I think I ought to tell you, Jerry, nobody's listening to you. The gal's name needs clearing, partner. Oh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. But I'm sure Mr. Warren is pleased at the opportunity to, to deny the silly story I heard this afternoon. Why, certainly, Mrs. Leeson, certainly. What is it? Lucy, this woman said that Mr. Warren permitted you to bring proceedings so that, <laughs> well, uh, 
so that your reputation wouldn't be ruined. There. <laughs> it's out. I know it's silly, oh, but... Oh, of course it's silly, Mrs. Leeson, and so are you. What? It's to hear, Warren. Uh, no, I mean, it's silly for your mother to believe such nonsense. Oh. You see, Mrs. Leeson, our divorce was one of those tragedies that you read about in the papers. A trusting woman and a worthless man. I was never good enough for Lucy, and, well, finally she found it out. Lucy is above suspicion, and always has been. She's as pure as the driven snow, as faithful as she is fair. And I would that I had been worthy to kiss the hem of her garment. Never during our marital bliss did she cause me one moment's uneasiness. Never did I have to ask, Lucy, where have you been? What were you doing? I always knew. I tell you, something wonderful went out of my life when I lost her. Uh, I know just how you feel. How do you know? How can you know how it feels to have used up the best years of a woman's life? Well, of course, that's the way it goes. Excuse me, you're sitting on my prospectus. Huh? Oh, oh. Dan, take those and look them over. And let me know. And Dan, take good care of her. Well, I'll be going now. Yes, Dan, take good care of her. Maybe you will succeed where I failed. And I'm sure that uh, the three of you will be very happy out where the West begins. If you ever think of me, send me a postcard. Just say, having a wonderful time. I'll understand. Goodbye now. Well, Ma, are you convinced about everything? What about the music teacher? Look, you two try and settle things for yourselves and let me know how it comes out. I tell you, put a light in the window if it's yes, two if it's no, and if you can't make up your mind, just pull down the shade. Oh, Ma.